Hi, I'm Adam from Midwest Panel Builders, and today we're going to discuss backup instruments in your Garmin G3X systems. Before we get into our video, I'd like to remind our customers and viewers that uh, we now have expanded support for those who don't quite want a full system from us, but still want to order things like avionics or diagrams or maybe more basic harnesses. Uh, our web store at shop.midwestpanels.com is now open. Uh, we have uh, an expansive list of Garmin products on there, as well as uh, some products from our partner vendors like Ithra, uh, Vertical Power, and a few others. One of the most popular, if not the most popularly asked question that we get is what backup instruments or what backup power solutions do I need for my aircraft, specifically for those that are equipping and flying uh, IFR. Um, the answer to that question is somewhat subjective. Uh, most people follow what we would call the middle of the road, where they back up all of their primary instrumentation, but they leave non-essential items uh, behind. Uh, some other people are a little on the, we would say, underprepared side, where they think that they can get away with a little less than, uh, you know, maybe, well, if I lose my attitude indicator, you know, not a big deal, I have other items for it. Um, most of the people, though, that stray away from the middle of the road are ones that want to back up too much. Um, these are the people that will have, you know, three redundancies for something that maybe almost doesn't even need one redundancy. And um, so it's not necessarily our place to, uh, to determine what is or is not right for you. Again, this is a subjective matter for the most part. Uh, however, we do have to consider the practicality of these things. You know, there's time, there's space, there's cost considerations, time being actually installing these things because a lot of them can get pretty complex. Uh, but cost is probably the biggest thing for us. And so sometimes, you know, we put more money into redundancies that maybe we don't need to, but now that means that we have less money to put into other things that could actually be more useful to us uh, during a normal flight situation or even sometimes an emergency flight situation. Um, so we're going to try to answer, though, what is legally required. Uh, so this video idea was actually suggested by a viewer of ours. And uh, so their specific question is, what do I legally need to uh, fly IFR for backup instrumentation specifically? Um, so let's get into that. For a point of reference, all of our systems that are equipped IFR have the following backup capabilities. One, they have either the G5 or they have a second GSU-25 behind the panel to provide a backup AHARS indication on your screen. Uh, we also have two IBBS backup batteries and we use the six amp hour versions. This provides one hour of backup for our EFIS and its associated components like AHARs, engine monitoring, things like that. Uh, and then the other battery will run our navigator. Um, so like if it's a 375, for example, it'll run the GPS and the transponder portion of that. Uh, we then back up one comm radio as well, um, and then audio. So you can still, as they say, aviate, navigate, and communicate. You're losing no uh, capabilities in that situation. You can fly an LPV approach right down to minimum safely. Let's look at the actual legal requirement for IFR equipage in an experimental home-built aircraft. So let's look at Part 91, Section 205. The IFR instruments are specifically laid out in paragraph D, which reads the following. For IFR flight, the following instruments and equipment are required. First, you need the instruments and equipment specified in paragraph B and paragraph C, and that's going to be your day VFR and night VFR instruments. In addition, we need two-ray radio communication and navigation equipment suitable for the route to be flown, a gyroscopic rate of turn indicator, a slip skid indicator, a sensitive altimeter adjustable for barometric pressure, a clock displaying hours, minutes, and seconds with a sweep second pointer or digital presentation, a generator or alternator of adequate capacity, a gyroscopic pitch and bank indicator, this would be your artificial horizon, or a gyroscopic direction indicator, like your DG, or you know, in this case we have an HSI. What's important to note about that paragraph is there's no point in which the statement about backup instruments or even EFIS instrumentation uh, gets called out. So the thing is, is because we're not part 23 aircraft, which would be you know, your certified aircraft, like your Cessnas and Pipers, we don't fall under some of the Part 23 requirements uh, that do call up backup instrumentation. Um, now with that being said, just because it's legal for us not to have it does not necessarily mean that it's smart for us not to have it. Of course, you know, in today's world of electronics, one equipment failure could potentially be more catastrophic than it would be um, you know, back in the days of steam gauges. For example, if I lose my GSU-25 in this system, my entire AHARS picture goes down, so I lose 
attitude, I lose heading, I lose airspeed, um, altimeter, vertical speed, all that goes away. So it's a much more catastrophic failure than it would be if I had just simply lost an attitude indicator, or even a whole vacuum pump. So because we have to consider things like that, that's where an item like the G5 comes in, where not only is it a true standalone system, it can actually run parts of our aircraft for us. So if this screen dies in this single display system, the G5 will actually run the autopilot for you, for example. Um, so these are the considerations that we make as, um, as professionals installing these in all different types of home-built aircraft. So I can imagine some of you might have the question in your head right now, why do all certified aircraft have backup instruments if there's no legal requirement for it? Uh, so the simple answer is, Part 23 is a little bit different than us. Some things actually are required to be backed up. There's, it's a little bit of a convoluted mess, but as a whole, it doesn't really talk about it much. But especially for retrofit installations, what we have to abide by are called supplemental type certificates. So when Garmin uh, produces an STC for a G3X system, they have to get it approved by the FAA and go through all the processes to make that happen. And as part of that approval process, the FAA is going to say, well, what happens if this fails? So in Garmin's STC for the G3X, they tell you that you need a standby flight display like the G5 or the GI275, or you need to retain your original steam gauge backups for altitude, airspeed, and uh, artificial horizon. Um, so while there may not necessarily be a regulatory requirement in Part 23, it's the STC that establishes the requirement uh, for backup instrumentation in certified aircraft. So to recap what we've talked about up to this point, we do not need backup instrumentation when we're equipping EFA systems into our experimental home-built aircraft. That being said, especially for IFR guys out there, it's not really safe not to do so. Um, but it's still perfectly legal. So I hope that this has helped you make some decisions about planning backups in your aircraft. If you have any questions regarding backup instrumentation or really any aspect of the avionics planning uh, portion of your build, Please feel free to contact us. You can leave comments below or you can email us support at midwestpanels.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.